in the name of the Lord. Numbers 13, verse 23 to 33, and then we'll look at Luke 5, 4 to 6, and then finally we'll look at Mark 14, that 5 to 39. Then they came to the valley of Eshkor, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkor because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you send us. It truly flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, or if you like, but. The people who dwell in the land are strong, the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. That will be a key verse for us. 29. Verse 29. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, the cities are fortified. Verse 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land, it's like they looked around and they saw who dwells where. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the backs of, they mapped the place. Verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let's go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Verse 32. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours. Remember they had said it flows with milk and honey, but these ones are saying it devours the inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Verse number 33. We will finish there. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, and came from, who came from the giants. And we are like grasshoppers in our, in our own sight, the way we saw ourselves. And so we were in their sight. Luke 5, verse 4 and 6. Luke 5, 4 and 6. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Verse number 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, or in other words, but at your word, I will let down the net. In the book of Mark 14, 35 to 39. Mark 14, 35 to 39. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour that might pass from him, Verse number 36, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse number 39, again he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. Our Heavenly Father, in a moment like this, our prayer is that, God, you can speak to us in the language that we can understand about the spiritual things that are hidden, dear Father. Reveal them to us. Give us a revelation of your word. And cause us, Heavenly Father, to be doers of that word. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk about the power that is there in words. I'm not an English teacher, but I went to school. Sisawasawa. Ukiona mtu anaongea Kiingereza, hata ukishikia na shrub, alifundishwa. 
Wale hawakufundishwa wanasema yes no yes no. Yes? No, hata wakati no is in the wrong place. Yes. Yes yes. No no. Yes. Lakini wale walisoma they make sentences. But if I, I was an English teacher maybe I would not shrub the way I shrub here many times until some of you know I come from karate ga you know you know because of those shrubbing. But in the English vocabulary there is a handful of words there are many words that can change the entire context of a sentence. You put it in a sentence it changes all the meaning. You 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 put it in a conversation and you change the conversation. It actually can bring a different outcome of the entire situation. And in our text today, a single word has changed. And it has changed in a multitude of ways. It has changed entire dialogues, entire situations, and even entire worlds. Because those are the three things that we are going to, to find out. That in numbers, it changes a situation and a dialogue. In Luke, it changes a situation. But in the Gospel of Mark, it changes the entire world. The word nevertheless. In definition, again, the Old Testament, the original Hebrew means, strangely enough, seizing, it is an end, nevertheless becomes an end, nevertheless becomes finality. When I say nevertheless or but, it's like this is it. Nothing else can be done. In the New Testament, the Greek used there, in, in, in Luke's writing, the word nevertheless is, is used for transitioning to something new. Because Peter is beaten up, but nevertheless revives his spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in Mark's writing, however, nevertheless is used as an opposition to some concession. Because Jesus knew why he came, but he uses the word nevertheless to ask the Lord whether that, that concession can be changed. Nevertheless. This simply means that although the speaker does not want to yield or to coincide to the circumstance, the speaker, the person speaking, has submitted his own will through the power of nevertheless or but. If somebody says, I love you, but, wait for the but because the but is so negative. I need you, but it's good to wait to hear because the but, whatever will come after the but, is not very, very exciting. Finally, from another dictionary of American heritage, it, it simply says, in spite of. Nevertheless, but in spite of, and we can find it in many scriptures. Even in the book of Revelation, the Lord talks about a church that was good and says they have been able to, 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 to persevere. There have been even martyrs within themselves. But he end up finally says, but I have something against you. You have these Nicolaitans with you. You have allowed this kind of doctrines to permeate in you. So I want to bring three points and I will be done and then we'll pray for the needs of the people. The first point that I want to bring to you is the word but or nevertheless or in spite of, can change something which is positive to negative. Positive to negative. You see, the spies, the story of the 12 spies, if you look at it, you'll find out that they were able men. Actually, they were the most able people. They were like the leaders of every tribe. They were picked from every tribe. They were, they are the influencers of the day. There were people that knew, knew how to map their way out. There are people that were also fighters. There were people that could resist anything. There were people that were picked because of their faith also in God. There were people that knew that God, what he has promised, he will do it. There are people who knew, actually, these are people who had seen all the miracles. But these are the people that are going to bring a change in the course of the children of Israel because after that, nevertheless, they all died, and they went around the wilderness for 40 years, for 40 years. You see, because of the word but or nevertheless, there's a lot of change that can happen from this thing that was positive to this thing that becomes negative. What was positive was this. They were sent to spy the land, and they did. 
And they come with a promise because what God has said, I'm sending you to a place or to a land that flows with milk and honey. In other words, these are people that knew where the bees are. These are people who knew where the grapes are. They went and saw them. And the Bible says even they carried one among both of them because it was so heavy. It was so juicy. They were carrying it as a testimony to those people that they left behind. And I think as they marched with the big bananas, you know, the long bananas that used to be called Muraru. I don't know where that Muraru went. You know that was a Muraru? Whatever. But, you know, big bananas. One time I went to Meru uh, Deliverance Church and they had uh, Adoko. And they had cut very big bananas. Maybe they had gotten them from Barimante. Very big one, you know. Big one. Mkubwa kuliko, kuliko mimi. Kubwa inafungwa. Of course, after the fans drive, Niribeba Moja. But they were big, huge. And these people come with those reports. And the reports are right. They also say what we saw is that... Uh, the Amalekites live here, the Canaanites live here, the Jubazites live here. And if, if we want to know, if we want to fight them, th these are in the mountain. If we want to fight these ones, these are on the sea. The report was good report. Because if I come and told you that Australia is like this, like this, like this, then when you get there, you can learn a little bit about Australia. But unfortunately, I can only tell you Australia is among the round thing that is called the world. Although they are down, and they are under. They don't walk like this. That's the, something that I saw. If you get there, they walk as straight like I am, you know? That's what I discovered. That although it, and I did not have much time to, to walk around. But I can tell you this for free. If I had a choice, and I was a young person, and there was America on this side and Australia on this side, I would go for Australia. Why I would go for Australia is this. They are so concerned about families that if you work for the Kenya government of Australia and you are blessed with a baby, like Faith and Haran, they got a baby, is it the day before yesterday? They, had a jewel, they have jewel. And I to a jewel. Angel. Wow. Haran is a to a baba ya jewel. That man. <laughs> If you work for the Kenya government of Australia and you have a baby like they have one, you can go for maternity leave for two years. But they will pay you for only one year. But they will keep your job for the other year. I thought, man, that's a good place to have children, Amma. Because here is three months. But it is if you work for the Kenya government of? Yeah. Don't work for anybody else. The others might give you three months or two or whatever. And I thought that was unique. Because I talked with my sister. She lived in the U.S. before she went there. And she told me she can negotiate how she wants to work. And she looks at the timetable of her children. I'll pick my children quarter to three. So I cannot work after two. Take me or leave me. In America, we that have gone there, we know. It's hassle, ide hassle, ya kabisa. Hassle, ide ya kabisa. Iyo hassle. Ukulea mtoto wa Amerika. Ukiona mtu wa melea mtoto wa Amerika. Akija Kenya, toa kofia yako weka chini, na umpigie makofi. Inakuwa wakibarua. Lakini kule niliona, ukani negotiate. Hiyo ni, mimi nataka kufanya mpaka saa nane. Nichukue ama ukatae. I thought. Anyway, maybe I'm wetting appetite of some of the young people. Nini waze musiende. Waze tukai hapa, tukai hapa, hapa, tule watoto waende. Sisi tukai hapa, hapa tu. From a positive to a negative. In other words, in Numbers 13, the word nevertheless changes positive to a negative. A good story. They witnessed God's promise, but could not Trust his protection. Does not, is that not sounding like you and I? 
We know the promises of God. God has promised he will never leave me nor forsake me. God has promised to me that he is the physician that never loses a patient. And yet when I'm sick, I feel like he can lose me. You see, he's a teacher who's no student fails. He's a good teacher. If he teaches you mathematics, you are guaranteed you're going to pass. He is one that when he calls you and he promises you something, he will do it. And yet at times we know all that promises, but when it comes to us, we doubt it. It's like we don't believe it. I met somebody yesterday who gave this testimony that when they went to the U.S. with the family, he was going to study, but he carried no money, he went with the faith. So he meets an American and he says, I've come to America by faith. And the American is wondering, can I go to Kenya and go to school by faith? Because to them, faith, they don't understand now listen to me. You people pray this prayer. God, bless you for the food that we are eating. Remember those that have nothing. If you pray that prayer in Australia, they will tell you don't pray that kind of prayer because food is enough for everybody. I'm telling you from what I had. Don't pray that kind of prayer. When you pray, add Africa. Don't say anything here. <laughs> our, our God, our awesomeness, the way our God is, we can, we can turn that which is positive, what God has said, into a negativity because of even some of our vocabularies and the, the words that we add in our sentences and the statements that we make. We, we say one time that God is our healer. And then in another one we say, oh, we know God is our healer, but so and so went with the same sickness. Have you heard that story? Sinani alikufa na hii hii tu. Hata huyu jamaa tunaona. Huyu miaka yake, huyu amekatiziwa, miaka yake imekatiziwa. And you know, you speak sometimes like you are the healer. You are not the healer. All what you need is to hold on the promises of God. After all, after all, if, whether, God, if whether God is going to deliver us or not, he will still be God, isn't it? We are still going to trust in him because he's our God. So these guys turned what was positive, the things that they had seen God do, and they put a negative. When they were saying God can, they turned around and said God can't. Remember they went in. Now ask yourself, how did they go in? They went inside and they came out. Nobody touched them. Why? Because God protected them. Now they cannot believe God can protect them again. If God has delivered you from one problem, even the other one he will. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So don't allow that kind of an attitude to turn you around from believing God into what God wants you to be. It was the nevertheless that became an end, a ceasing, a finality, and they got condemned for 40 years. And I'm praying God help me. What you have promised me, I want to receive it when I can. Don't give, it, don't give it to me when I'm 80. You know, give me it now. Let me enjoy it. But some of us, because of the burden, nevertheless, God will still bring it. But you might take 40 years for it, to, and you might not enjoy it. Maybe your children will enjoy it. Nevertheless, from positive to negative, in that dialogue, it changed everything. Even when Joshua and Caleb said, we can go, we are well able. He was not able to convince because 85% of the people around him were negative. So even if he was positive himself, it could not work. They changed the positive, which, we, which was, we saw, and they say, we can't. Now think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Sometimes we leave church and we are so charged. Eh? We leave church and we are so charged. God can do it. You remember when I told you, verbalize, and you left here verbalizing? I know some of you verbalized up to the gate. And then when you left, you said, verbalize. <laughs> you know, verbalize. Now I'm telling you, there are people who, verbal, who verbalize. Actually, I understand Elizabeth Congo is leaving on Tuesday to the U.S. We don't know for how long she'll be there. You know, this is the year of kingdom. 
If God has said it, I'm going to believe it. Even if it doesn't happen today, I'm still going to hold on to it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. So the attitude was, yes, there's plenty of promise. But the land we spied out has giants in it. That God who caused me to spy it, that God can open that door for me. We move into the second one. The second point that I want to bring from those scriptures is that you can have a negative. You can move from negative to a positive. And this is the place that I like. That I can move from my lowest level to what God wants me to become. And it all depends with my attitude. Have you said to yourself, I'm a king and I'm a priest? Now, the ladies, you remember the ladies' conference which you had in, in, uh, in Nakuru? When you left there, what were you calling yourself? Your Excellency, Your Majesty. How many of you are still calling yourself Your Excellency, Your Majesty? Ruth still calls herself Your Excellency and Your Majesty. What happened to the others? Maybe you called yourself for a while until you said, nobody is appreciating me and I'm Her Excellency and Her Majesty. You know, nobody needs to admire. You know, in the first service I said, I will serve the Lord because of the promise whether people acknowledge me or not. I will sing for him whether people appreciate me or not. I will still be a thermostat. I'm not going to be a thermometer in a church. I'm going to be the cause that causes people to enjoy what God has. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, that you can turn that which was negative into some positiveness by using the word nevertheless. Listen to what Peter says. Peter tells the Lord, but maybe for you to understand, let's, it's good for us to back up a little so that you can get the whole picture. Verse number two, where we had read about uh, Peter in the Gospel of Luke. Verse number two. Are you still there? Good. And so two boats standing by the lake, but, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Now that's what had happened. They told the whole night, they have given up, they left the boat, they had gone with their nets and they are cleaning them. When you clean their net, what you're trying to do is to wrap up the game. The game is over. I'm not going back to fishing. So in Luke's recording of the miracle of the fishes, we experience the power of nevertheless. The situation is so there. The whole lake has no fish, but because the Lord has said so, I'm going to fish again. It is during the day, and I'm a professional fisherman, but because the Lord has said, I'm going to do again. The families are not living well, but because the Lord has said, he's the one who started the family, I'm going to hold on, and God is going to renew the strength in our family, and we are going to keep on moving. My children are not doing very well, but because the Lord says the inheritance is for me and my children, I'm going to keep on holding on to the Lord. You see, it is the promise, and it is my confession that I'm going to confess what God is going to do and walk in that direction. So Peter says, these powerful words to the Lord. You see, Lord, we have walked these waters all night. We were here the whole night. We have caught nothing. But in spite of all that, he turns around. I'm beaten, I'm down, I'm ground, but I'm going to rise up. Let my enemies not rejoice over me even if I fall. Seven times I will still come back. In the name of the Lord. Amen. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. So when you fall one time, don't give up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Keep on trying it. Keep on pushing. Keep on. You know one of the biggest challenges that we have in this, in, this, in this country and among the Christians is that sometimes when you try something and you fail, you kind of even agree with the devil. I think God did not want me to have this. Imagine, you have gone to the embassy, they have and then you say, Nikifikiri naona, God is not in this. You know, maybe God is not in it, but that's not the way God proves he's not in it. God can give you the passport, the visa, and everything, and still tell you you are not going. That is my God. Because you see, it is not the papers that take you there. 
driving 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 mimi niliendesha niliaguka mara kadhaa hata nilikuwa nikianguka tu hata kabla sijaguza gari seriously napewa kagari kare kadogo naendesha kwa meza naambia umekanyanga maua nauliza maua ilikuwa gani kijana we kijana sura ya kazi toka umekanyanga maua ya kajo you know and i knew sikuwa nimekanyaga maua ya kajo nilijua tu siku moja nikaomba bwana nisaidie help me today that when i go there after feeling a couple of times i said lord help me after i go there they allow me to start driving fast instead of kanyanga maua ya watu ah sure enough i landed eh uh, jimmy kamani said here i am sir where is your car there was a big matatu out there big one not kidogo we landed in nikarudisha nyuma katoa na ile eh nilipofika kwa geta do you drive i told him honestly i do but you you just wait on so i took him on the super highway up to pangani he said wewe umepita wewe twende twende nikachukue kitu kingine nachukua hapa nayo kima tatu kikubwa hata hiyo meza hawakunifanisha they never took me to the table again i knew my strength but i kept on saying one day I know I will pass. I know I have no problem. But I also know people who went to do driving and they believe God had told them that morning umepita. So when they went there and, and they were told umeanguka. One lady would tell the, the, the inspector, "Mimi sijaanguka. I actually did not come here to fail. I came to pass." So you have to keep on going. And then she would start and the car would stop, you know. Doo -doo -doo. And then she stood, you see madam umeshindwa. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I have not. I have not. And finally of course she got the driving license and so on. But I'm saying let's not be people who give up on the first time. For you that are gotten married and you are between 0 and 5. Amen. Wonderful time, but it is one of the times that you need to pray God and the Holy Ghost so that you stay together because changes happen at that time Musjana ambaye akuwa na mimba anapata na ako kwako anafika mahali kupinduka ni kibarua wewe ndio unapindua yeye anafika mahali miguu inameatuka wewe ndio unaosha anafika mahali katoto kanakuja kanarara katikati yenu sasa wewe lazima useme nevertheless Nevertheless I know some coward husband when they have a baby they run away they leave the baby and the mother they come back when the child has been weaned out I six tak wa ubiria waze ni watu I was just saying but at that time is when a lot of troubles happen hata mtu anaweza kukimbia kwao naenda kwetu watu wa rika zetu Zinavizo kwa hapa tip nyinyi vijana watu wa rika yetu you made it sure kama kimeumana you stand at the door yes. ati unaenda wapi hapa utoki <laughs> na unajua kwa sababu tumeokoka hatuwezi pigana si ndio kwa hivyo wale siasimama kwa mlango waseme hapa uto sasa so, unashidi utotokea wapi uweze toshia dirisha unakaa ile hasira yako inaisha lakini vijana wanafuguliaga wengine toka kwani <laughs> my prayer is that we are going to say nevertheless the lord gave us a promise we are going to keep the promise we are going to go on time might be hard financially we might go low but nevertheless the lord has promised we will go for his promise blessed be the name of the lord nevertheless nevertheless Simon says nevertheless you have said it i'm going to go for it and it was in that place where jesus now start calling disciples because he saw they can believe him they can trust him from a carnal to a spiritual from a carnal to a spiritual in the gospel of mark 14 it tells us how the power of nevertheless was able to change the whole world Nevertheless was able to change the whole world. 
You know, Jesus was God, but was wrapped in humanity. Now, humanity, humanity, who mwili? Si mwili una majaribio yake. Hey, kwanza angalia yule mko nayo mwambie wewe uwe mtu mzuri. Usini usichukue bagi yangu. Hey, si huu mwili una majaribio mengi. Tunatoa sadaka na unanifuata pale nimetoa. Hai, mwambie jirani yako tafadhali wacha kufuata usifuate. Si huu mwili una majaribio mengi. Mwili has a lot of temptation. Wa mama mkiwa na mama mwingine amepita unamfuata. Unamfuata unamwangalia kiatu, unamwangalia nguo, unamwangalia nywele. <laughs> naye mwanaume naye pia anaona mwanamke naye anafuata, anaangalia kiatu, anaangalia nguo, anaangalia nywele. Sikuulizi unatafuta nini? Ni mwili hii, mwili. You know, mwili tu. Somebody made this comment and I thought it was funny. He says, we have given our heart to Jesus. Our heart is with Jesus. But we have allowed the mind to stay so carnal and earthly. That, maangalia hivi. So, ukiwacho munaangalia, muna sama, angalia vile ya naringa. Na haku ringa, ningu wa menunua mzuli na kiatu ambayo go hiu hage zieko. Na naenda tu pole pole zaki ya kienda kule. Na muangalia, na uyu haki anguka, anaheza umia, ah. So Peter says, because of your word, everything in nature says this, but because of your word, everything around me says it is not possible, but because of your word. What I have done the whole night says this, but because of your word, I'm going to do it one more time. Tell your neighbor there is another time. There is another time. Don't give up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's Jesus as a human. Wrapped in humanity. He knew what awaited him in the remaining hours. He knew. He understood the pain. He saw the pain that he was going to go through. He knew it. But I also know there is a scripture that you and I quote a lot in Hebrews 12 too, which says, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. But we miss the point. There was a testimony for him. There was a promise, but there was a testimony for him, a place where when the children of Israel found themselves, they exchanged that which was positive to a negative. They exchanged that which was, not, was right to something that was not wrong. And they suffered for 40 years. When, but when Jesus gets to this point, he feels, he feels the pain. He knows what he's going to go through. However, from what he did there and Gethsemane, what he did was he crucified his insight. And I tell you, friends, brothers, and sisters, I think there is a need for us to crucify the inside ourselves so that the will of God can be done. So when he crucified himself from the inside, remember the prayer he was praying there, is Lord, because all things are possible. Remember the prayer he prays, God, with you, all things are possible. In other words, siyata unaeza ni kufanya hivi nilale, ya sinimekufa. But you see, it was not any other death. It was death on the cross. So that was the feeling. God, you can change. I feel my humanity is going to be humiliated, but can you do something? But he gets to a place, he nails that feeling on the cross. And then he walks from Gethsemane, he comes down and meets Judas. He gives him his place for kiss. He allows Judas to kiss him. He asks, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus. They said, here I am. They all fall back. He asked them again, who are you looking for? Jesus. He said, here I am. And you know, finally, Peter gets annoyed and removes his sword and he casts the, the servants here. But Jesus, because he has crucified his humanity over there, he picks the ear and fixes it back. And sometimes I wonder, ata wakiona mujiza kama huo bado wale musulubisha. Why? Because he had to take the whole journey up to the cross. For you and for me, for the change that you have, Jesus had to say, nevertheless. 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 And nevertheless, you and I are enjoying because Jesus said, never.
nevertheless. We have the amazing grace because of nevertheless. Of late, I have learned two things that have echoed them everywhere I've gone. That you see, and I pray that I will never ever forget, that grace, Nikitu chap, tap, kizuri sana, grace. You see, where you are and who you are is the grace of God. I'm telling you. Now, some of you might not understand. But if you, if you are like this brother of mine, you know, I was somewhere yesterday, and my friend, we went to school again with him. I, my friends go to, I go to good school with good people. We were in high school. We knew high school. I was his senior. <laughs> he has six degrees. Monja, Bidi, Tatu, Ine, Tano, Sita. PhD, na unaogeza hivyo na munaitaka post whatever. Na hizo zigine zote, na hizo zigine zote, sita. Back, I, I was most of thinking, professor, when you have so many, ata kutebea, sinazima utakutebea, ukua na. No, but he walks, he walks, he, he is normal. Unless he tells you, you will not even know. Now look at your neighbor very well, because you are seated next to someone, amesoma. Now, how, haku kustua. Eh? Ule mmekana ya mesoma. Si, si mwana Moses. Moses alikuwa na uhuru. Kape tenye kundu. Ya mesoma. Bwali hita wasomi. Hey, bwala. Na Moses ni mchirika wetu. Hako pale. <laughs> na muna muonaga ni security. Mutika hudhie kadere ya. <laughs> but the point I'm saying is he has six. But then the joke is this. In the same meeting, I have a bishop, a friend of mine. He, he made this comment, my bishop now made this comment. He said, this professor here, when we were in college, I did diploma, he was doing certificate. You up in Kenya, Wakiwa Kenya. The one who has six degrees was doing certificate when the other one was doing diploma. Mwangalie jirani yako vizuri mwambie jameni niangalie vizuri. Where I am today? Hey. Wewe unaweza baki na certificate na mimi nishapata PhD. Because grace hiyo nilikuwa nikisema ni kwa sababu ya neema. Hebu Bwana awe akitukumbusha kijiji chetu. I know I know wengine tulilelewa kwa nyumba ya matope, you know. Like I told you one time my son tunaenda nyumbani anapiga hiyo matope. Alafu anaona inje na sama, daddy, I can see outside. <laughs> Nambi umiaribu chumba ya shu, shu, tutalara. <laughs> so when I remember that and where I live, I say, God, your grace has been good. Yes. Hallelujah, the grace of God. And I pray that all of us can know that. You are where you are, from whatever place, because of the grace of God. You have clothed yourself, you are eating, you are living, because of the grace of God. Never, never forget the grace of God. It is God who has changed that negativity to some positivity. Amen. The other word I have walking, walking with the last couple of weeks is the favor. 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 Favor ni kali sana. Favor. Hey, don't play with the favor. And the favor can cause you think, I'm not living right because I'm being favored. You think I am doing dubious business because of favor. Because when favor comes and points at you, everybody wants to bless you because of favor. Everybody wants to talk about you because of favor. Because favor is not fair, but God gives his people favor. And I pray that God will allow you to remember grace and from today you walk in his, in his favor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to finish by saying, the nevertheless word, the word nevertheless, has ability to change everything. It can change a dialogue. It can change a situation. It ultimately can change the world from a positive to into a negative. And it can become final so that you have to struggle again for a long time when God was willing to bless you. It can also change a dialogue, a situation, an entire word from a negative into a positive like it did for Peter. And from there, you live a better life thereafter. It can also change like Jesus did and change a whole situation. 
by becoming a point of surrender where Jesus surrendered it all. There are those of us who have said it looked promising at first. I saw the promise. Nevertheless, there is a promise. But you have been saying, nevertheless. Watch out the next statement that you make after the nevertheless. So that you can move from glory to glory. Amen. Again, remember, it can change a dialogue and a situation and eventually can change a city, a nation. It can change the world. There is the power of nevertheless. But God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to live for you. Whether people see me or not, I'm going to be sold out for you. I'm going to walk out from this place knowing that the word nevertheless can change me. That the nevertheless can cause me to move into the next level. And you know what? I feel in my spirit there are men and women in this congregation looking at me today. And I am there. I'm speaking to myself. Where, where you are, it has been positive all along. But with, the, with all the positiveness, you saw some giants. And now you are scared. You saw some giants and you want to change. You're just about to say, but, you know, God, you have said you can heal me, but. God, you have said you can provide for me, but. God, you have said you give me this, but. You are in that place and you are just about to give a negative report. I want someone to pray for you. Because you know what? That can cause you to, be, to stay retarded for a long time. And some people will enjoy your benefit, though. But I want to buy, buy benefit today. There is another group that I understand and I feel in my spirit they are here. Where you are is a wonderful place. You have been beaten up. You have touched the ground and you are saying like Peter, because you have said so, I'm going to try it again. You have said it so, I'm going to go to the same office again. You have said it so, I'm going back to the same embassy again. You have said so, I'm going to go back to the same home again. You have said so, my children will live better. Those are people that need prayer too. But also there are those that are saying, Lord, it's so hard. This cup that I have to take. You know, there are some of us that you have to take it. It's bitter, but you have to take it. Maybe it is in marriage or employment or business or children, but you have to swallow it. And you are saying, Lord, can't you do another way? Can't you do a miracle? You know, there are people who say, Lord, the Kenya is so hot. Can you swallow me? And he hasn't swallowed you yet. You are still around here with all the crises and the problems and challenges and sicknesses and disease. But you know what you are saying, Lord? If you say so, then nevertheless, I'm going to go through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm saying there are people here that already God has given you wonderful promises and you know it. You have spoken about them, but you are still saying to get it. Nevertheless, they are giants. They need me to do this. I need this money. I need this problem. So you're just about to fall back and you might lose an opportunity that God is giving you. But there are some of you here that are saying, because God has said it, I'm going to do it again in the name of the Lord. But there could be others that are saying, Lord, it's bitter. But nevertheless, I'm going to go through it. I want to ask the ministry team if they can, standing up and looking at the congregation. We do it quickly. I don't know, they are not many. They are just a few people. They are just a few people that are saying yes to the Lord. And if you can come quickly, we'll finish this service as quickly as we can. The worship team will help me. Remember, we want to sing only three stanzas in that song that we started with. Rock of Ages. And then we'll be done. If you're coming, come quickly so that we can move into the next service.